It's now from Capitol Hill, Vice Chairman of the Select Committee on Intelligence, Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia. Senator Warner, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Uh, you sent a letter just this morning, and I want to read a little bit here, uh, to DHS, Homeland Security, asking Secretary John Kelly to disclose additional information on the full scope of foreign attempts to interfere in the 2016 elections by hacking into state and local election systems. What are the questions you want answered specifically about a state and local election? Well, first of all, let me make clear. I don't believe that the Russians affected any vote totals in 2016. But there have been lots of published reports that have said <laughs> that literally dozens of states the Russians attempted to hack into. So far, only two states have come forward, Illinois and Arizona, and acknowledged the Russians hacked into them. I'm not trying to embarrass any state, but I'd like more information to get out into the public showing how extensive this Russian attempt to interfere was, not to, again, embarrass the state, but to make sure that we're ready for 2018 in my home state of Virginia, where I have elections in, this year in 2017, to make sure that states are sharing information, that they have best practices. One thing that the Secretary Kelly did do that I strongly commend is he said, our election infrastructure is critical infrastructure. So we just need more cooperation and to be on guard. So based on the information you have, Senator, you believe Russia did hack into state electoral systems, but somehow did not affect the vote totals? Now, what I think they did was certain places they attempted to hack in, they may have been identified and caught. Certain places they were just probing the system. But what, what I've got out of DHS is that DHS feels that states were then, in effect, victims, and it's up to the states to come forward with that information. I'm not, I don't believe we're made safer by keeping this information in secret. I can only say a lot more than two states that have publicly come forward, the Russians attempt to get in, attempted to get into in 2016, and the more we can be aware, the better we can prepare for future elections. Senator, on what issues, documents, or witnesses is the independent counsel, Mr. Mueller's investigation, most likely to run into some conflict or need for coordination with congressional inquiries? Well, Senator Byrne and I met with the uh, spe special counsel Mueller last week. You know, we set up a process so that we can deconflict in case we want to talk to similar witnesses. Obviously, there's a, a lot been in the press recently about obstruction of justice. Uh, that would be something that would be criminal that the special counsel would look into. We're still looking, though, into patterns where it appears that the president may have tried to interfere and politicize some of our top intelligence officials. I'm particularly concerned about some of the conversations he had with dr former director Comey, where Comey was so worried that the president might, frankly, lie about those conversations that the uh, director Comey had to memorialize them in separate memoranda, because we still haven't gotten to the core issue with which is, we know the Russians intervened. What we don't know is, was there a level of communication or collaboration between a officials of the Trump campaign and the Russians. That is something we still have to look at. And on the overall question of intervention, the one thing that really bothers me is, you know, we've got unanimous consensus from the intelligence community that the Russians intervened. I don't know a single senator, Democrat or Republican, that doesn't believe the Russians intervened. The one person that still refuses to acknowledge this by calling it a fake news and a witch hunt is the president. Why doesn't he accept the unanimous conclusion of the intelligence community? It really bothers me a great deal. Senators, Nicole Wallace, um, earlier in our program, Senator Whitehouse said something that I, he said yesterday that, that he knew or had information that uh, Mike Flynn is already cooperating with the FBI. It may have been for some time. He suggested it was over false statements he delivered when federal investigators, the FBI, came to talk to him about contacts with Russia um, during the transition. Have you been briefed by law enforcement on what crimes Mike Flynn has actually committed or is uh, suspected to have committed? I'm not going to comment on any specific briefings we, we have uh, and we've had. Uh, one thing I do know is that General Flynn was willing to testify, but he wanted immunity. And there does seem to be a continuing series of stories, one it appears almost every other week or so, where there were either further con uh, contacts with Russians, uh, further payments by the Turkish uh, business leaders. Now there's more reports about other trips to the Middle East. Um, so uh, I hope that, and I don't know uh, whether General Flynn is cooperating with the FBI or not, um, but clearly there's uh, a, lot of, a lot of area there of concern. Senator John Heilman here, staying on the same topic. Sure. There's been a lot of concern since the end of last week about the president 
uh, and the possibility that he might try to fire either Rod Rosenstein or Bob Mueller or both. Um, tell me how what your level of concern is about that at this point, and if he were to make that attempt of either or both of those, what would then happen in your body? Well. First of all, I didn't think this administration, this president, could surprise me anymore. But then he went off and fired Comey. Uh, so the idea that he would potentially fire Mueller or fire Rosenstein would be just remarkable. And I think the Senate would then set up a separate independent inquiry uh, because we just cannot allow this kind of action to go uh, unaddressed. One of the things that also surprised me when we had the attorney general in front of us last week, I thought I gave him a softball question and I asked him, you know, please just assure us that there's not at least been discussions in the White House about potential presidential pardons. And instead of getting a straight up answer saying, of course we've not discussed that, we again got a punt answer from the attorney general. So. Uh, again, the idea that that the president might fire Mueller, might fire Rosenstein, or might be discussing pardons uh, is really all very troubling. But we don't know because uh, this White House seems to give us a different answer every day. Senator, different topic before I let you go. I want to ask you about this negotiation, this discussion about the health care bill in the United States Senate. The plan seems to be, according to most reports, for Mitch McConnell to get a bill together, to get it scored by the CEO and to vote on it by the end of next week. How does that strike you? Pretty wacky. I mean, we're talking about affecting one-sixth of our whole economy, uh, the health care industry. Uh, for all the flaws that Obamacare had, there were hundreds of amendments that were offered, many of them offered and accepted by Republicans. The idea that one party is going to do this entirely in secret and then try to jam it down the throat of the American public, I think would be a political disaster and a substantive disaster if it looks anything like the House bill that took, what, 20 million plus Americans would lose their, lose their health insurance. And one of the things as a former governor, $800 billion dollar cost transfer from the federal government responsibility to the states. I'm glad to see a number of Republican governors starting to scream about that because as a former governor, that would ju that's just a, a fiscal flim flam. All right. Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, thank you for your time as always. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you. One final note this morning. We talked a little bit earlier about White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer holding yet another off-camera press briefing yesterday in place of the usual publicly broadcast briefings. And now there's this. According to The Atlantic, asked why the briefings are now routinely held off-camera, White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon said in a text message, quote, Sean got fatter. Bannon did not respond to a follow-up question. Is that real? May have been joking. Or let me just say, it's, it's hard to battle the bulge inside the White House. A lot of sitting and not a lot. I'm serious. I worked in the White House. It's hard. Bowls, bowls of M&A. How would you have felt, how would you have felt about it if one of your colleagues texted that to a reporter about you? For all I know, they might have, but we didn't leak, so it would have stayed inside the dome. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, that does it for us this morning. <laughs> Stephanie Rule picks up our coverage, including an interview with John Ossoff at the center of that Georgia 6 race today. Stephanie, take it away. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.